Hello and welcome to this new Israel 2 modding SDK tutorial. Today we're gonna learn how to create a custom weapon mod for Israel 2. For this tutorial, we're gonna use a weapon model that is already included in the Israel 2 modding SDK project. So let's move to examples, weapons, parts. And this sample gun FBX is the file of the 3D weapon that we are gonna use for making our mod. Of course, you can use your own custom 3D model for your weapon mods, so let's take a look on Blender how to set up properly the 3D model for a weapon. Let's import our weapon model. This is the folder where the weapon model is located. And let's take a look on how a weapon model should be composed. The first thing we're gonna do is to make sure that your weapon model has correct size and rotation. Your weapon model should be looking toward the negative y axis. From a top view, it should look like this. Second, you should scale your weapon model to consider having a blender unit the size of 1 meter. Third, make sure that the pivot of your weapon is located circa where the trigger position is located. In this example, the pivot point is here in the handguard, but it's not a huge mistake. The important thing is still that the pivot point is in this area, and you will probably have to adjust it a little bit later on in the modding SDK if you find your weapon to be a little bit mislocated. Then, let's make sure that the independent parts that we can act independently in-game are separate models. Here, for example, we have the weapon body, the weapon charging handle, and the magazine. Now, let's make sure to have an LOD version of our weapon. This is the version of the weapon that will be rendered at distance. Basically, when the camera is far away from the weapon, you won't be able to notice small details. So, it doesn't make sense to render a high-poly weapon, but we want rather to render a low-poly version of the weapon to save performance. To do so, you can simply select the parts of the weapons, Ctrl D to duplicate it, move it somewhere, Normally we put on the right side of our weapon and then we apply reducer modifiers on it. You can do that on every individual part. Anyway, the final result you should have is something like this. We already have the LOD, so we won't go on with the full procedure. Also because that would become a Blender tutorial, but today we want to explain you how to use our modding SDK tutorial. So, now that we have all of our meshes correctly set up in Blender, we can Ctrl A and select Rotation and Scale to make sure that Rotation and Scale are applied correctly. And finally, we can export our weapon. I can overwrite my weapon FBX, however I didn't make any changes so it should be the same as before. And make sure that when you export an FBX from Blender to the modding SDK, you choose Apply Transform and Apply Scaling to FBX Unit Scale. Now we can export our weapon. So now, this is how our FBX model looks in game. Let's start with a custom weapon mod from this model. Notice that I am doing this tutorial without applying texture to this model because this model doesn't have them. But if your model has some textures, make sure to extract the material in the same folder of the weapon or whenever you want, but I suggest the same folder, and apply texture to your material. Again, 
this weapon doesn't have textures, so we are not gonna apply anything here. To start creating a template for our weapon model, we can right click on it and choose Easy Red 2 Mods, Weapon Template, and choose a template that is correct for our weapon. For the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna go with SMG. So this is the template we created for our weapon. We got already our script applied. We got the models we selected in the project folders and a bunch of other stuff already set it up. We can now move the LOD of our weapon in the same position of the original weapon. Normally is it a position zero, but it depends where you place the pivot point on your model. From the hierarchy in the left side, we can so select the weapon and all the components that have been created. And if we select the root or the top object we got here, and we go to the inspector on the right side, we can see all the scripts and the components that are applied to our weapon. Here we also have this generic gun component that holds all the configurations for our weapon. There is a ton of little features that we can change here, however, the template already chose most of the settings we want to apply. So we are gonna change just a few of them. First, if our weapon has a bolt that wants to move forward and backward while shooting, we have to apply in this spine pose. And to do so, let's go to our weapon model and drag and drop the spin model of the weapon into the spin pose parameter of the script. Next, we want to set a proper position for the weapon side position. This is the position where the camera will be placed when aiming downside with the gun in game. Next, we can adjust the fire position, which is the position where the bullet will be spawned from, and the eject position, which is the position where the empty bullet casing will be spawned from. We got LF hand position which is the left hand position in third person view where the hand will be placed when holding the weapon. And finally, we have the mag position, but this position is gonna be set up automatically when setting up the magazine. To set up the magazine, first select the magazine 3D model and all the other models that compose the magazine and also the LOD version of it, if there is any. With the magazine position in its original position relative to the weapon, right click on the magazine and the LOD and every other model and choose Easy Red 2 Mods, Weapons Template, Gun Accessories, Magazine. Now our magazine have been separated from the weapon model and it is using its own scripts. This is because in game, weapons and magazine are completely separate inventory items. If we now select the root object of our magazine, we can see the magazine script in the inspector. And the first thing we want to change is the socket name of our magazine. This is how it works. Weapons can be compatible with multiple kinds of magazines if they use the same socket name. So here we want to put a socket name that will need to be the same exact name in our weapon script. For this test, we're gonna call this my socket, and we're gonna copy it, select the root of the weapon model, go to the script, find magazine socket, and pass the socket name in the magazine socket property. Our weapon and our magazines are almost ready, but first, since we got models for them, let's finalize the LOD component. First, let's do that in the magazine. So, select in the hierarchy the magazine root where the LOD component is located. For this weapon and its magazine, we have one high poly version 
and one low poly version. So in our LOD component, we want to have two LOD levels, LOD0 and LOD1. We can so right click and delete LOD2. We want to adjust the LOD0 and LOD1 parameters to a good start distance. We can set the LOD1 start at 80 and finish at 2%. Having the root of the magazine selected, so the game object where the LOD component is located, we can drag and drop the sample gun mag in the LOD0 and the sample gun mag LOD in the LOD1. Now if you zoom in in your magazine, you will notice that you will see the high poly version of the magazine and if you zoom out, you will see the LOD version of your magazine. We can do the same with our weapon game object root. So we can select it, remove the LOD2 from our LOD component, and assign the different gun models to the different LOD levels in the LOD component. As we got the high poly version of our weapon parented to this sample gun game object, we can just drag and drop it to the LOD0. And we can do the same with sample gun LOD game object, drag and dropping it into LOD1 as we got the low poly models parented to it. Level of detail is now working correctly. We can now create a folder where to save our weapon configuration, which are called prefabs, drag and dropping them inside the folder. Once we set our prefab, we're gonna see them in the project folder with this little blue box icon. The final step is to include the new prefabs that we created into our mod bundle. To do so, select the newly created prefab from our project folder, create a new asset bundle name. For example, I will call this test MG weapons. I'm gonna do the same with the weapon, assigning the asset bundle I just created. Now we can go to mod menu, mod compiler, select the asset bundle we just created, we can assign now a title for our mod, for example test SMG weapon. We can set a workshop description. We can put some change logs, especially when we do updates to our mod. We need to check the end user license agreement. And we can check what's inside our bundle. As you can see, we can see that in our bundle, we found two models our weapon and our magazine. We are now ready to publish the mod, so select the workshop visibility, I'm gonna keep this private for now, and click on build. Now the modding SDK will first compile our bundle mod, and second it will upload it to the Steam workshop. Make sure to have Steam open during this procedure, otherwise the Steam workshop will give an error during the upload. Now that the upload is complete, we can subscribe to the mod in the Steam Workshop and test it in the game. As you can see, the mod is correctly uploaded to the Workshop, so we can now subscribe to it and start EasyRed 2. Now that we are in game and we subscribe it to the Workshop item, we are ready to test our modded weapon. So, we could either find it in Mission Editor when setting up custom squads for our custom mission, or we can simply go to the training mission, shooting range. From here, we can find the weapon selector crate, where we can find our modded weapon if we just click on the left icon. Let's select it, and let's see how it works. We can aim, we can fire, we have magazines in the inventory, 
we can reload, we can do melee attack, we can basically do everything we expect the weapon to do. Notice that this was just a quick setup tutorial, because we didn't set up proper sounds, we didn't make the custom animation for the weapon, we didn't make a proper icon, and basically we didn't assign any special properties for the weapon. We will go much deeper in how to configure completely a weapon in the next tutorial. Thank you and congratulations for setting up your first modded weapon.